on to the place now where I'm ready to glue these doors up. And uh, what I did is I built a little jig to glue the doors up, fastened a good straight piece of plywood across the top, and I used a framing square to set the top and the bottom stops perfectly square, just enough wiggle room to get the door in and out of the jig. And then to clamp it, I built a long wedge uh, using a table saw. If you don't know how to make a long wedge, just Google that you know, on a table saw. And, uh, here's the other piece right here. And once I get it glued up, then it's just take and shove the wedge in there and give it a few taps with the hammer, and it'll push it up pretty good. If I need to use a uh, bar clamp or whatever across the uh, jig to pull it tighter still, I can do so. But that's what we're going to be doing right now. This is in here loose. I have not glued it up yet, so uh, we'll set the camera on a tripod here and see if we can't glue up this door. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this tight bond wood glue and we're going to glue up a door. And uh, the styles, we're not going to put glue on. What we're going to do is glue up the uh, ends of the rails and put them into position and then put the, put the panel in after that. So we'll start on the, this bottom rail over here and trying to get the right amount of glue in there is kind of maybe a little bit of an experiment. Use this brush to move the glue around and get it on coating on uh, all parts of the wood, including the very end of the tongue there. Hope you can see that okay. Once we get done with that, we slide it into position. Make sure that you uh, check the fit and get it, the rail meeting perfectly with the bottom of the style because that glue will start to take a set and uh, you don't want to have to reposition it. You can take and slide the bottom panel or the panel into place. And position that. Again, make sure that uh, your fit is good. So that glue will start to take a set and you want to make sure it's in the right place so you don't have to reposition it. One thing, I don't know if you can see it or not, but the panel should be about a sixteenth undersize all the way around. So we've got about an eighth of an inch under there and a sixteenth on each end because the panel should be floating. It shouldn't be, uh, it shouldn't be, uh, a tight fit in there. If it is, it's going to probably eventually bust the joints as the humidity of the wood changes. Take the other uh, style and put it into position. Now you're going to drop it into the, the clamping jig. Make sure you push the uh, rails all the way out. If you do that, then your joint should end up perfect, top and bottom. The only thing left to do is to take my wedge and put it in place. As I tap it in, you should start to see glue come out of the joints. You can see the glue popping out there. A little bit coming out there and there. So yeah, I had about the right amount of glue in the joints. If you really thought you needed to, 
you could take and put a bar clamp across the jig and put a little bit of uh, residual tension on it if you thought you needed to. I don't know that that's really helping anything in this case. It's not hurting anything either. So that's how you glue up a door. So this has been in the glue jig now for over an hour and I left just enough room on this end of that uh, sharp taper wedge to take and drive it out. So I, as you remember, I left some paper in the bottom of the jig so that if the glue stuck to it, I'd be able to get the door out. And so it worked about as I thought it would. So there's the door glued up and done. Well, I've got another door. Um, in the glue jig right now. Um, the first door that I popped out, I started to clean it up a little bit. I did use a belt sander a little bit to dress up these joints. And you've got to be pretty careful because as you sand across this, you're going to put the marks across the grain on this. So sanded this one first and then this one, and then came back and got it with a belt sander here and wiped out any. Uh, cross grain sanding marks as well. Um, I took a uh, sanding block and gently knocked off the sharp edges. Any place you've got a sharp edge on wood, uh, you're just setting it up for failure at some point in the past. So I took all the sharp edges off the uh, edges anywhere that I could. I took a joiner and um, six inch uh, delta joiner, it's in another part of the shop, set it up very, very shallow and uh, ran the joiner or ran the door through the joiner and the way I did that is I ran the first couple inches of the door into the joiner uh, bit and then flipped the door end for end and finished the cut. If you try to just push push the door through a joiner when you get to the end you're going to split off the uh, end grain right there and so I did the ends of the door first and then ran the side of the door through the joiner as well. So it's all cleaned up pretty nice right now. Um, I'm gonna take, I think, an eighth inch round over bit right there, and I'm gonna put it in this little uh, plastic laminate trimmer. And then I'm gonna run the edges of the door with that bit. A lot of different things you can do with the edge of this door. You could just leave it square. Um, you could put a quarter inch cove bit in it and cut a cove in the edge. You could put a quarter inch round over and, and round it over a little bit bigger. I'm just going to take an eighth inch round over. And basically what that does is it just makes the edge of that door more durable over the years for anything that's going to hit it. Uh, so that's what I'll be doing next. done. Uh, the base cabinet, uh, there's the two doors that are going to go on that. And over here, I don't have a lot of room in my shop. I got it all clogged up with cars. But over here is the upper cabinet and the two doors that are going to go on that. Um, they're 100% done. This part of the door has been clear coated. The uh, styles and rails of the frame of the door have not been finished yet. The next thing to do is to to hang the doors. I'm going to use this European style hinge. It's a, it's a nice hinge. Uh, it takes a 35 millimeter bit to drill on the back side of the style to hold it. Um, over here I've got the dil drill press that I'm going to set up a uh, drilling jig 
I just got to get it located yet and attach it to the table of the drill press and then we'll be ready to drill uh, the back of the hinges. There are a few things I'd like to show you about these hinges. Um, this back side is always going to be 35 millimeters uh, drilled with this bit and uh, you're drilling to a depth of about a half an inch. This particular hinge, it's, a, it's called a full overlay. Right there, a full overlay hinge, so it's going to set the entire face of the uh, door covering the uh, cabinet carcass. Um, it has a quick disconnect right here. You can pull that lever and that part of the hinge comes loose. Um, and so the hinge or the door is easily removable. You snap it back in place. This is what it's called a soft close hinge as well. So there's the open condition. It opens 105 degrees. When you go to close the door, the face of the door would be out here. You push the door part way and it'll finish closing itself so the doors themselves won't need any door catches. Well, I've made a little mock-up of how the hinge is going to work. Um, just, just like that is what, what it's going to be. And uh, I also made a story pole here. Um, you can hang that on the edge of your cabinet with all the layout marks on there and get everything just perfectly right. That would be dead center of the hinge. The top mark would be the top part, that, this part right here on the hinge. So what I've done is I've mar marked the top of each hinge and then I can take my mock up and just put it in there and position it like that and then mar mark the uh, locations of the screws. So I've already got that done here and down at the bottom as well. I can also use my story pole to mark dead center of the uh, inch and three eighths or 35 millimeter hole. This marks dead center of the hinge. So if I hook the top of the door, mark it there and mark it there, then it should match up with what I've already marked in the cabinet. Okay, we're gonna bore the uh, back holes for the European hinges here. And I'm using about four inches from each end. If you can see that down to the other end, um, that's where the hinges are going to be located. I've got this auxiliary table on there. I wish it was probably about twice as big, but this will work for a few doors. Um, and I've clamped the door down because that bit uh, doesn't have a very long lead point on it, and uh, it likes to uh, skate away a little bit. So clamp on the door down to help help hold it. Also set the depth over on the other side over here with uh, my depth uh, adjustment on the drill press. on the upper cabinet now. I think I'm going to conclude the video with this little clip. Um, so one thing to know about these hinges too is they are fully adjustable in all three axes. There's a screw right here that will adjust the door for left and right. There's a screw uh, right there that I think will adjust the door for in and out, and there's a screw right there in the middle that will adjust it for up and down. And, and then there's a little release right here. If you push the release, uh, you kind of usually got to get the left hand on the edge of the door and the right hand pushing that button, the door will pop off. Um, this first time I've used what they call these uh, self-closing hinges, and kind of get it to about that place and let go of the doors. And, You'll see that they slowly, they're not really fast by any means, but they do close themselves to where you won't need a door catch of any kind. Um, the uppers, uh, I've got a little recess underneath it so I can grab it down there and open the door. Um, and the, the lowers will probably buy some uh, door pulls for them. But anyway, that's making uh, panel doors for the coping uh, stick router bits.